a full list of materials used in this project, check out the description below and click on show more. There's some other good stuff down there, so you want to make sure you check it out. We're going to begin by picking up a stop bead. As you can see, I have my stop bead here. I'm using the same 11 that I'm using in the project. So that will be my first seed bead as, soon, um, as well as my stop bead. And I have just a short tail thread here of a few inches. After the stop bead, I'm going to pick up eight of my uh, four millimeter fasted rounds and in between each one of my 11 0 seed beads. So you should have eight 11 0 seed beads and eight faceted rounds, starting with a seed bead here on this end, your stop bead, and ending with a faceted round. Once you have all those beads on, we're going to take these and put these into a little circle here. So we're just going to kind of turn them around on themselves into a circle and take your thread and needle and go through the stop bead. And then I'm also going to continue on through all the other beads until I go back through that stop bead again. I like to go back through all the beads so that I get a nice tight circle. Uh, going back through the beads again just helps to reduce any slack and gives you some more, some more tension there. So now that I passed uh, my, now that I passed my stop bead and actually went through the next facet around as well, I can kind of pull from both directions and make sure that uh, the circle is nice and tight and I don't have any slack thread. So now that I've got my little initial circle here for my bezel, I'm going to go ahead and add some uh, 15 O's in the center here. You want to be coming out of one of the faceted rounds, which I already am, and go ahead and pick up four of the 15 O seed beads. Go back through that four millimeter faceted round and let these four millimeter beads, or sorry, these 15 O seed beads swing around the four millimeter towards the center of your project. And I'm going to pass my needle through the next 11 O and the next uh, facet round. I'm going to pick up three 15 O's and I'm going to go down through the last of the 15 O's that I picked up to go around the previous four millimeter and pull that tight. I'm going to pass through my four millimeter and my 11 O and I'm going to go through the next four millimeter. So I'm coming out of the next four millimeter that doesn't have any beads already added to it. Again, pick up three of those 15 O's and share the last seed bead from the previous four millimeter and go down through that 15 O through the four millimeter and the 11 O and through the next four millimeter. We're going to do that continuing to add three beads to the next one, two, three, four beads that I have here. Um, my fifth bead here, which will be the last bead that I need to do, will only get two seed beads added because I'll be sharing a bead at the beginning and end on either side to the right and left. So I'm going to go ahead and um, continue adding my seed beads until I get to this final four millimeter where I only need to add two. I've added my border of 15 O's to all of my four millimeter rounds except for the last one here. And just like we did on the previous beads, I'm going to pass through the 11 and the four millimeter round that still needs those 15 O's added to it. I'm going to pass up through the 15 O at the end here to the um, on the bead to the right. So I'm sharing the 15 O to the right. I'm going to pick up two more 15 O's and then I'm going to share the 15 O here on the end from my on my bead to the left. 
So I'm going up through the 15-0 that I'm sharing with this bead to the right, adding two beads, and then going down through the 15-0 that I'm sharing with the bead to the left here. And now once I have that done, I can go back through some beads here, some of my four millimeter beads, and give a nice tug just to make sure everything's cinched up and there's no slack thread. Now I'm ready to move on to building up this bezel so it's a little chunkier and it's not just a front. And you can see here how this is gonna sit, how this will look on the front. So now I'm gonna build a side and we can start working towards making this a little bit more 3D. I'm gonna start by using, now I don't need my four millimeter rounds right now, so I'm just gonna push those to the side. And I want my thread and needle to be coming out of one of the 11 O's sitting between the four millimeter, sitting between the four millimeter beads. I'm gonna pick up five of my 11 O's and go back through that 11 O that is sitting between my four millimeter rounds and pass through my four millimeter onto the next 11 O and pick up another five of my 11 O's and again just go back through that 11 O through the next four millimeter and onto my next 11 O. So I'm going to continue adding a group of five, a little loop here of five um, 11 O's to each one of these eight 11 O's that are sitting between my uh, four millimeter rounds. Once you finish adding the loop of five 11 O seed beads to each one of the 11 O's sitting between the four millimeter rounds, we're going to take our needle and thread and travel through this group or loop of five or five eleven o's through the two on the side here you can see it forms kind of a rectangle so we're going down through two and through the third and the third seed bead is going to be the one at the end that sticks out the most and on that third and center seed bead we're going to then, after that, pick up one of our four millimeters, and we're going to then just go through the next of those center seed beads on that group of five. Pick up another four millimeter and go through the next center seed bead here. And as you pull that tight, you'll see that that will start to form a little tire shape or uh, kind of more of a bezel, more of a bezel than um, something flat like this. So I'm just going to simply continue around here, picking up one four millimeter and then going through the center in that little group of five hanging off, hanging all around the edge here. As I do that, I'm going to give it a little pull and pull it inward. And I just need a couple more here. And here's my last one. I have one more little gap and I'm going back through that same seed bead where I started and give it a pull. And now what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to insert my Rivoli. So you're gonna take your Rivoli and you wanna put it with the front or the color full side facing down and give it a nice tight pull here. Because at this point, these beads will hold the Rivoli in. We're gonna make it a little tighter so that um, we've got a nice decoration on the back and it's a little bit more secure but the front here is the first part that we made. So you want the colorful side of your Rivoli facing that way. And once you've got that Rivoli in there, go around um, one more time here, just passing through all the same beads to give this, um, just to tighten this up and 
get rid of any slack thread. So just go around here one more time, pulling tight and just making sure that you don't have any gaps in your thread or any places that you have to tighten it up. So there you go. We're going to now work on the back here and finish this up and make sure that we've got a nice secure. We're next going to add a little bit of netting in the back here to close in over the Rivoli back even more and to just secure that and to also make it pretty on the back. So coming out of one of my four millimeter faceted rounds, I'm going to pick up seven of my 15 O's. And I'm going to go around and through that four millimeter bead again, allowing those seven seed beads to sit around it, similar to what we did on the front. I'm going to pass through the next 11 O and actually through my next four millimeter round too. I'm going to pick up five of my 15 O seed beads. And I'm going to share two seed beads from the previous border or set of 15 O's. And then back through my faceted round, my seed bead, and my next faceted round. I'm going to add another five 15 O's. And again, I'm going to share two 15 O's from the previous set and through my faceted round and my next seed bead and through the next faceted round. And I'm going to continue here adding those five seed beads until I get to the very last faceted round, just like we did on the front here. Now I have my last four millimeter faceted round to add that border to. So just like I did on the front, only this time I'm going to pick up and share two 15 O's from the left. And I'm going to pick up three 15 O's to add. And then share two 15 O's that were on the right side here. And once I add that, I'll have my whole border added to the back side. So now we're going to tighten this up because you'll notice that it's not really very tight. And we're going to introduce some more of our 11 O's. I need just a few 11 O's for this. Take your needle and thread and just follow your thread path through the 15 O's until you get through that center 15 O that is right that is sitting towards the center of your project. So we've got a series of seven 15 O's here. And if we count from the very first, we have one, two, three, four. It's our fourth and center 15 O. And you can tell that it's the one that's sticking up. It's the point that should be uh, right above each four millimeter faceted round. So you want to be coming out of that fourth seed bead, pick up an 11 O and go through the point or the fourth seed bead above the next four millimeter round and continue to do this all the way around until you've connected all eight points above your faceted rounds. And you can see this is pulling it in towards the center, just kind of like tightening up a, a tent almost. And don't be afraid to give it a nice little tug as you work. And that'll also make it a lot more clear if you do accidentally pick up or go through a wrong bead. 
we go. And I have one more 11 over here to add. So here we have all those 11 O's added between those points. And then what I'm going to do here for good measure and to tie up my thread is to go through now just all of the 11 O's. So I'm going to pass through each one of these 11 O's just the 11 O's, no 15s, and go through once or twice. And you can tie up your thread at this point if you don't have much thread left to work with, um, but you can also leave it attached if you want at this point, because if you've got plenty of thread, we'll just follow our thread path through to get to the next, next spot we wanna work. So there you go. Here is the front and back of the bezel that we've now completed. We're going to embellish this, of course. And there's a side. So we're going to embellish this, of course, but that is the basic first piece here that we need to do, that simple four millimeter bezel around the Rivoli. I'm now going to add some embellishment to the front, and you can also add the same to the back if you want. Uh, but the front here is, of course, where we see our Rivoli color. So I'm going to start on the front and add some embellishment around the four millimeter rounds here to give it more of that flower feel. So I'm back on the back here. And I'm just going to follow my thread path. I'm probably coming, you're probably coming out of an 11 0 So we're going to uh, slide into one of those 15 O's and just follow the thread path to the front and going through the faceted rounds, the 11 seed beads on the side, just tracing our way up to the front. So we wanna start here by going through one of the 11 seed beads that is sitting in between our faceted rounds. And we're going to pick up five of our 11 O's in a contrasting color. I have this nice uh, pearl Ceylon color. And then I'm going to pass through the next 11 O. Pick up another five of my contrasting color 11 O and go through the next 11 0 between the faceted rounds. So I'm going to do that all the way around until I get back to the beginning. After adding all of the five mil or the sets of five uh, to the outside of your uh, four millimeters, take your needle and thread and just pass through all of those 11 0s one after the other. And don't go through any other 11 0s, just through the contrasting color. And that will tighten these up around your, around the border here. So you're just going to go through all of them one after the other and connect them all with one thread running through all of them. This will close some of the gaps between between where they're sitting sort of above the other color 11 0 and it will just kind of tighten it up and make it a neater sort of border here. You can also, as you go through here, skip the center 11 0 and go down through Go up through two and down through two, up through two, skip the center and down through two. And what that will do is it will force that center or that third in your group of five up with the thread sitting below it. And that will give you that little bit of a pico trim where it's just giving you that 
center bead sticking out in a point a little bit more than the rest and giving that a little bit more of a focal point so it gives it more of a geometric so you can see here as I go through and I up through two skip the center and down through two what that's doing for me is forcing that center one which I'm skipping over and really you want to kind of be skipping under it because you want your thread to go under and you want that center one to pop up so go go ahead and um, go around and do that we're going to tighten that up and make those centers pop if you would like at this point I cut off my thread and I tied off my extra if you still have thread to work with on your needle then you can just uh, follow the thread path to where we're going to work next. Um, if not, go ahead and tie it off like I did and pick up with a new piece of thread and a new needle or same needle, different piece of thread. I'm going to move to the back here and I'm going to add some more of my four millimeter rounds around the outside here so that the, um, the back is actually a little bit bigger and wider than the front. And this is optional you don't have to do this um, you have your bezel done and so if you want to call it a day there of course you can but i want to make this a little bit bigger so i'm going to start in the back here and i'm going to use just one of my uh, 11 o seed beads because i do have a new piece of thread i'm just going to use one of those seed beads as my stop bead and take my thread and needle through that through that 11 now and I'm going to be coming out of one of my four millimeter rounds. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's, another uh, four millimeter faceted round and another two 11 O's. Pass back through that four millimeter round. So you're adding the new four millimeter round directly next to it and pass through to the next four millimeter round. And we're going to repeat that same step Oops. and get my tech my thread tangled a little bit here what happens when you start with a new piece of thread and it's probably a little bit longer than you should be playing with pick up two of my 11 o's a faceted round and two more 11 o's and I'm going to go back through that seed bead or through that four millimeter faceted round just like I did in on the previous bead I'm going to go the whole way around adding four millimeter beads to each of the four millimeter beads that's already running around my bezel here after adding a four millimeter to the outside of all the existing four millimeters on the back we're going to add that same embellishment or that same border of contrasting 11 O's around the beads that we just added. So once you finish adding those four millimeter rounds, you are probably coming out of one of the beads um, on the inside here. We're going to go up through the two 11 O's on the side of one of those new four millimeter rounds. And we're going to pick up four or five of the 11 O's whichever fits better. I'm going to try four here. And you can do five if you want to make sure that you have that little Pico trim. Um, sometimes the seed beads, even though they're all uniform, sometimes they're slightly different shapes and sizes. So four or five. If you don't want that center bead, you can do four or five if you want that center bead to do that little pop-up then you up uh, then you want to have an odd number of beads which is going to be of course five so i'm going to do five beads here i went up through the two 11 o's on the side that i used to connect my four millimeter round and then i added five new beads in that contrasting color and went down the two 11 o's on the side i'm going to move to the next bead to the next four millimeter round 
and I'm going to go up through the two seed beads that I used to connect it. And I'm going to pick up five of my contrasting color and go down through the two connecting seed beads on the side. And again, up through the two seed beads on the side, five new seed beads. And you don't have to do a contrasting color, but I like the contrasting color. And down the two on the side. So we're gonna follow this pattern all the way around. And you can see what that looks like on the front there. So go ahead and follow that all the way around and continue adding those five seed beads to the outside of the four millimeter rounds. After now adding the contrasting 11 O's all the way around here, I'm gonna add some seed beads in between each one of the petals just to keep this from flopping around a bit. If you want it floppy, you can certainly keep it like that. I'm gonna go up through the seed beads here on the two um, seed beads that were connecting the four millimeter round and through my contrasting petal color here. And I'm gonna go just through my petal color. And now it's up to you what color you wanna use here. You can, if you want to use the same color, you can pick up um, one or two of your contrasting color here that's going to blend. I'm going to do something um, contrasting. I'm going to pick up my 15 OC beads and this is what I would recommend that you do as well. I'm going to pick up two of those 15 O's and then move on through the next set of contrasting petal color on the outside through the next five of those seed beads. And then pick up two 15 O's and through the next five in that contrasting color. And again here, two of those seed beads in the 15 O and through my contrasting color. So I'm gonna go the whole way around here, picking up those 15 of seed beads and you can see on the front here having that contrasting color between helps give that a little bit more definition and it also just pulls the whole thing together and keeps each petal from flopping around on itself. Once you're done with your petals and adding those 15 O's in between all of the contrasting beads, we're going to start working on adding the cascading flowers. This is, of course, optional. You don't have to do this, but it definitely makes the piece. And uh, it's fun to have these little dangles, these cascading pieces that are going to make noise and, uh, and kind of move, move back and forth. Um, if you put this on a keychain or a purse, um, that's kind of the fun of having something like this that it kind of flows. So you can either, at this point, take your needle and thread and wind, um, follow your thread path back to the sort of center here, this in-between part between um, the top and the bottom of the bezel, or you can cut your thread off and start um, and just start your thread here again. We want to be working with the sort of supports here. They look like columns between the top and the bottom. So if you just kind of peel back those that second layer of flower, you're gonna find that you've got, they look like little support columns in there, those 11 O seed beads. And I'm just gonna go through one of those 11 O seed beads. And I'm gonna pick up a series of 11 O's. And I'm not even counting, I'm just taking a look at how long this is going to be. So pick up a series of beads, an inch, inch and a half, and see how long that's going to be. And then if you want to put a flower at the end of that, that can be your first, your first sort of cascading flower. Now I've got flowers. I've also have my four millimeters. I can also use 
my 15 is if I want to. This is really just going to be about whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to pick up one of my contrasting 11 O's and one of my four millimeter rounds, maybe another contrasting 11 O. And then I'll add um, this pretty mustard yellow flower. So I'll have that, that check round sitting on top of the flower, like the pink and the gold together there. And I can add whatever I want in here. If I want to do maybe a series of two or three seed beads. And anything that you have on the end, you're going to skip that and then go back up through the rest of the beads. And those beads there will hold your flower at the end. And I'm going to go back up through all the beads that I'm using to make up this particular uh, little dangle. I'm gonna think of another word other than dangle. I feel like I'm saying that too much and I don't think that's my favorite word for this. Comment in the comments below if, you, <laughs> if you're thinking of a more clever word than dangle. Uh, it would be like a fringe maybe like that's not quite appropriate either. I'm just going to go through another 11 L here just to connect and hook onto something else that I can sort of anchor this insert your word here, your dangle, your what, uh, <laughs> your flower. So I'm just using whatever 11 L on here that I haven't used before. I've got four of them in here. And you can just kind of go back and forth using different ones. You're not going to see it, um, so I'm not too worried about um, how it looks uh, because it's hidden under there. And I'm going to pick up another series of 11 O's. And I'll make this one a little bit longer. And again, I'm not counting here. I'm just picking up until I feel like the length is where I want it. And you don't want them all to hang at the same length. You want them to be different so that they cascade down. They don't all jumble up and compete for the same space. So this guy would fall about here. I'm happy with that. And I'll do something. Maybe I'll do the same thing. I like, I like having this pattern of the seed bead four millimeter and the seed bead. And then because this color is different, maybe I'll put a different color in there, or maybe I'll put uh, another faceted round in there. Although you don't see that very much. It doesn't really stand out. Uh, it looks like it stands out a little bit more on camera than it does in person. And then I'll take a seed bead at the end here to hold that all on and go back through my faceted round. And again, just like with the other flower that we added, I'm simply going to go back through all of these beads until I get up to the top where I can then add another flower. And this is sort of like the flower vine. So maybe we'll call these vines. And give them a tight little pull just to make sure that you don't actually have any slack in there. And coming out of that 11 I want to kind of go around another 11 So I'm kind of starting in a different position and I'll add several more of my flowers with their vines just like this. So continue here. Um, you can add as many as you want. Um, if you're getting this in the subscription box or kit, you're gonna have six flowers. Um, but of course, if you wanna purchase more, if you wanna add more of your own pieces from home, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna continue here adding the flowers. Once you've added all of your flowers to the bottom here and you've got this wonderful full 
beautiful sort of um, cascading flower effect. We're going to add to the top here a ladder stitch loop that we can then use to add our uh, clasp to because we'll use a clasp to then attach this to our purse or wherever else we want to add this. So I've brought my thread up to the two 15 O's that are going between the contrasting um, 11 O's there. And again, you can either take your thread needle, just kind of wind it through the project or start with a new thread and needle or uh, a new thread. And we're going to go, we're going to start with our needle and thread going through those two 15 O's. I'm going to pick up another two 15 O's. And this is just going to be a very basic ladder stitch. And adding those two 15 O's next to the previous two. Through the two new 15 O's and picking up two new ones. Through the previous 15 O's, which will then add the two new 15 O's directly next to them. And simply just going to go up and down this way adding two 15 O's to each set of two 15 O's. You want to pull tight and get it as tight as you can, but I am going to come back and reinforce this. So if there's a little bit of slack, you don't have to worry too much about it right now. You're going to make this um, about an inch, inch and a half or so. Take a look at whatever clasp you're using and just make sure that you can accommodate that clasp with however long your length of um, of the ladder stitches. So you can see here two uh, rows or two 15 O's wide will be fine for this clasp that I'm using. And if I look at this clasp here, I can see about how big my loop is going to be. And I'll just need to test that before I finish off the loop. So I'm going to work on this a little bit and then I'll show you how to attach to the clasp. I've completed the length of ladder stitch that I need in order to make a loop big enough to attach my clasp. And I've started working back down my ladder stitch in the other direction to reinforce it. And you'll notice that it also will start to kind of straighten it out. So I'm not adding any beads. I'm just simply going up and down through my beads to reinforce and to straighten out and get rid of any little gaps that I have between those rows of beads. So back now, I have come to the two beads where I started. And I want to, of course, add my clasp. And once you've got your clasp looped on or you've got your herringbone going, or sorry, your ladder stitch going through the clasp, pick up the last two beads in that ladder stitch and connect them to the first two beads where we first started. So you're just going around these beads, connecting them just like you would, just like you did in the ladder stitch and going up through one side and down through the other. And once you've got that connected, we're going to reinforce where this connection point is. And I'm going to go through. It's actually helpful if you go to the back here. You can see a little bit better here. And we're going to reinforce this connection point by going through our 11 O's on either side of our four millimeter rounds and then up through the other side here through the base of the ladder stitch which can be a little tricky because it is a tight little spot here and then down through the 11 O's 
and up through the next set of 11 O's here. It'll be like a little V shape. And then I'll help anchor that connection a little bit better than just if you had the uh, thread connecting it going through the outside border here. So that just gives a little bit more strength. And now from here you can uh, tie off your thread and find a lovely place to hang your new little key fob. I like to hang or I like to hide my thread here. So I'm just going to tie it in the middle between some beads and be careful not to tie that any place other than where you want it tied. Wouldn't also hurt to go through the outside here just to tighten this up because we've been tugging on it, adding our, adding our ladder stitch. Okay, and that's probably about enough. So I'll just cut this off. I'll burn it down. And then my, and then I am ready to attach this and hang this wherever I would like to have a little bit more fun in my fashion. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts on the project. If you're also interested in more uh, tutorials just like this one, click on that subscribe button so that you're notified as soon as we have new videos available.